What's up YouTube? My name is David Warren and welcome back to this week's video. Today I want to talk to you about why I chose both careers, nurse practitioner and CRNA. If you're new to this channel, my videos are all about being a nurse practitioner and currently being a CRNA student. If you're interested in that content, consider subscribing. Drop a comment below, let me know which career you would choose. And at the end of the video, let me know if you change your mind. Before we jump into that, I do have something that I want to mention to you, and that is I have partnered with Lecturio, and I wanna tell you about a really cool thing that they're offering. If you are a pre-nursing student, if you're considering going to nursing school, they've put together what's called a nursing school survival guide, and it's by Nurse Liz. I know Nurse Liz, she's a friend from social media. She does an excellent job at giving out content, providing you with all the information you need to know to not only survive nursing school, but to thrive in nursing school. I'm gonna do a review video of the whole course coming up in a few weeks, but I really wanted to introduce the concept today and I'm gonna give you the link below and a coupon code to get this course if you want to. The course is regularly $239 with my discount David Warren 20 You will get a discount for $99 for a one year subscription to that. If you wanna do the one month subscription, the regular price is $29.99. If you use my coupon code DavidWarren20, it's $14.99. So I'm gonna drop that in the show notes below. If you're interested in that, click on that link and check it out. Now let's jump into the video. Why did I choose both careers? You will hear people talk about all the time, you gotta choose one, you gotta choose one, you can't choose both. And I'm here to tell you that's not the case. You can choose both if you want to, nurse practitioner and CRNA. I'm gonna start with nurse practitioner and then I'm gonna jump into CRNA. I'm gonna tell you why I chose the nurse practitioner pathway, why I chose that profession, that career, and then I'm gonna tell you why I chose the CRNA profession, the CRNA career, and at the end, I'm gonna tell you why both work and some, some unique benefits that you will get by having both certifications under your belt. So let's jump into it. The first reason I chose the nurse practitioner pathway, the nurse practitioner career, is because of the patient interaction. And so as you know, as a bedside nurse, you get that patient interaction with every patient. Some people love it and some people hate it. And I tend to be one of those people that loves it. I love the patient interaction. I love going in and talking to people. Even if they're some of the crazies in the ER, I just, I love talking to patients. I love that interaction that I get. And the interaction you get as a provider is a little bit different than the interaction you get as a bedside nurse. So as a bedside nurse, I remember going in and asking like specific questions, especially in the ER about like, why, why are you here today? What brings you in? What medicines are you on? Doing kind of an abbreviated what's going on today. But as a provider, you really get to delve into more of that interaction. You get to take an in-depth history with each patient, figure out what's bringing them in today. And a lot of this, uh, this video is meant to be kind of general, but a lot of it's gonna depend on where you work. So if you work in family practice, you're gonna get to know your patients pretty uh, in depth because they're gonna be coming back, you know, week after, not week after week, maybe month after month, every few months, once a year. You're gonna get to know who your patients are. If you're in the emergency department, you really only have like one shot to get that down. Now that's not always the case because you have repeat offenders as we like to call them, people that come in multiple times, but more often than not, you're getting like a one-time shot to have that patient interaction. And I really thrive on that. I really like talking to people figuring out like what the missing piece is, what's going on and how I can help. So I love that about being a nurse practitioner. The patient interaction is really cool. Uh, one of the other things that I like, I would say the second reason is the wide scope of practice that being a nurse practitioner offers. And so if you're not familiar with that, the scope of practice of a nurse practitioner is really dictated by your specialty. So if you're a family nurse practitioner, you can do primary and urgent care basically from birth until death. If you're a women's health nurse practitioner, you can do women's health. If you're a pediatric nurse practitioner, you just do peds, NICU, just NICU. So you kind of see my trend there. Your, your scope of practice is really gonna be dictated by your formal education and by your specialty certification. So as a family nurse practitioner, if I wanted to work in an urgent care one day and then you know I kind of got tired of that and then I wanted to go work in family practice and I got tired of that and then I wanted to go work in cardiology or dermatology 
you can switch those specialties. And that's a really cool thing about being a nurse practitioner. A side note, a PA physician assistant also offers similar circumstances, maybe to even a greater extent. You can switch specialties. And this video is not about being a PA, but just as a side note, check into that career as well because you do have a lot of lateral mobility in switching specialties within the PA career. So that's one of the cool things about being a nurse practitioner is you can readily switch. You're very fluid. You can switch between multiple different specialties as long as it's within your specialty certification and within your scope of practice. The next reason is there is such a great knowledge base that nurse practitioners have. And again, this is dependent upon your certification and your specialty. So if you're an acute care nurse practitioner for the adult population, then you're gonna have a very large, uh, generous base of knowledge in critical care and in inpatient hospital management for the acutely ill patient. And that knowledge goes above and beyond what you learn in nursing school. You're gonna learn in-depth pharmacology, in-depth pathophysiology, the treatment and management of patients that are within that specialty. So if you're doing adult critical care, you're gonna learn how to take care of vented patients. You're gonna learn the complications that can come with long-term vents. And you're gonna learn the complications that ensue when you have ARDS. And you're gonna learn the complications of thromboembolism. And all of those things that happen in the ICU or in the inpatient setting, you're gonna become a master at that. And the same is true of a family nurse practitioner, maybe not in the critical care setting, but in the primary care setting. You're gonna know all about diabetes and how to treat diabetes, what the new therapies are, what the guidelines are. You're gonna know about hypertension and how to manage blood pressure. What medicines do you put a patient on initially? What medicines do you follow up with? How often do they need to come back? What labs need to be done? What uh, lab parameters are you monitoring for on some of these antihypertensive medications? And so, your knowledge base is really gonna be dependent upon your specialty, and it's gonna be so much more than that uh, of a bedside nurse, so much more that you're going to learn and be able to implement than you would be as a bedside nurse. And for those of you who like that learning and who like delving in deep into those concepts, that's gonna be one of the reasons that you probably like being a nurse practitioner. All right, the third reason is I really wanted to be the one to be able to treat the patient. I'm sorry I keep looking down. I've got my like list written down here and I'm trying to look down to make sure I don't miss any points. So uh, I, I really wanted to be the one treating the patient. And so I remember growing up, I was watching the ER shows and that's really what like got the passion in me uh, for wanting to be an ER nurse practitioner and probably the primary reason I spent almost eight years as a ER nurse practitioner because I, I just thrive in that environment and I love it. And so one of the reasons for that is I wanted to be the one to treat the patient. I wanted to be the one to go in the room, talk to the patient, figure out what's going on. Maybe not even talk to the patient. The patient's unconscious. Go, to, go evaluate the patient, do a physical exam, figure out what's going on, order some tests, order treatment, and properly get the patient to the right setting. So if they need to be admitted, admit them to the hospital. If they need to go to the ICU, admit them to the ICU. If they need to go home, then discharge them home. If they need to be transferred, then transfer them. And I wanted to be the one to do that. I wanted to be the one to go in and figure out with the help of a team, what's going on with the patient and be able to treat the patient. And that's what you do as a provider. So as a bedside nurse, you're more in a, uh, supportive role and so uh, everybody supports that team to get the patient taken care of but then as a provider as either a physician as an advanced practice provider an NP or a PA you're gonna be the one going in and guiding that care and so of course you need help you're not gonna be the only one doing that and I don't mean for that to sound like egotistical that I wanted to be the only one calling the shots because that's not the case at all. For those of you who work in healthcare, you know that's not the case. You know there's so many supporting roles that happen, but there is someone, a team of people who guide the care of that patient. And whether that be a team uh, in the intensive care unit, a team in the emergency department, whatever that is, there are people who guide the care of that patient. And I really wanted to be a part of that team to determine who needs to be admitted to the hospital, what therapies do I need to order, what tests do I need to order, and what do I need to ultimately do with this patient. So that's one of the reasons that I chose the nurse practitioner career. I would say the, not the last reason, but probably one of the bigger reasons is the salary potential. And I do want to give you a bit of a disclaimer here, and that is that money is not gonna make you happy. Um, 
it's just not the case. Like you can make as much money as you want, it's not gonna make you happy. It might lend you towards being more happy, but money within itself is not gonna make you happy. So if you're just going into this career for the money, I would tell you to reevaluate that because that's not entirely accurate. Uh, salary can play a part in your choice to go to a higher education or to go get higher education and to get additional certifications, but it shouldn't be the only factor. So with that being said, nurse practitioners have the potential to make good money. Average salary for nurse practitioners is around $100,000 to $120,000 per year, depending on your specialty. As a new grad, you, make, you might make a little less than that. As a seasoned nurse practitioner, the potential is even way higher than $120,000. So if you're working a full-time job, you can expect to make, depending on your specialty, 115 to 120,000 if you've been a seasoned nurse practitioner for several years. If you branch out and do different things like I did, you have the potential to make well over 200,000. And that is to be a travel nurse practitioner. And again, this is not the video to talk about being a travel nurse practitioner, but if you check out some of my other videos, you'll see that the income potential is there to be a nurse practitioner. If you're located in one like central area, you might not make as much, but if you choose to do it right and you choose to do some travel assignments and do things kind of the odd way and not the way that everyone else does, the income potential is there and you, you, will, you will make really good money doing that. So I would, I would advise you to consider looking into that. If you're looking for more salary, look into some of the alternative options. Being a travel nurse practitioner is, is one of them that comes to mind your income potential is very high whenever you do that. So uh, those are some of the reasons that I chose the nurse practitioner profession. Now, here are some of the reasons that I chose the CRNA profession. And again, I'm not. this is not really the video for me to go into all the details of why I made the switch like I did. There are videos on that if you wanna check out, maybe my most popular video if you wanna check that out. But these are some of the reasons that I chose the CRNA profession. And the first is the one-to-one -one patient interaction. The one-to-one -one patient interaction, I love that. The longer I've been in emergency medicine, the more I treasure those one-to-one -one patient interactions. And so if you're an ICU nurse, you love that because you have those either one-to-one -one or one-to-two assignments, and that's where you thrive. In the emergency department, we don't do that. We, I, As a provider, I have anywhere from six to 10 patients at a time usually. And that's not uncommon as a provider. Obviously as a nurse, you're gonna have way less, maybe one to three, one to four, one to two, depending on the acuity. But as a provider, you're gonna be taking care of a wide range of patients. And so that's one of the uh, benefits of being a CRNA is you get a one-to-one -one patient. There are, I can think of maybe a few scenarios when you would be taking care of more than one patient. Obstetrics being one, if you're doing neuraxials and you're like running the OB floor, <clears throat> excuse me, not something I'm interested in, but that's a way to get like, you know, more than a one-to-one -one interaction. But typically, more often times than not, when you're in the OR, you're gonna be doing a one-to-one -one anesthetic with a patient, and I love that. I love being able to focus my attention on one patient at a time and being able to take care of just that patient, get that patient taken care of, move on to the next. Now, plus side to being a CRNA, if you want that more than one-to-one -one interaction, again, it's available. Obstetrics is probably gonna be the way to go. You'll be taking care of multiple patients, but as a CRNA working in the OR, one-to-one -one patients. The next reason that I love being a CRNA student, and I think another reason I will love being a CRNA, is the knowledge of pharmacology. And that kind of caught me by surprise, but I really going into CRNA school thought I had a good grasp on pharmacology and boy was I wrong. I did not have a good grasp on pharmacology. So in CRNA school and in just in anesthesia in general, you are going to know a whole lot of information about critical care medications. And this is kind of leading me down to my next few points, but for now we're gonna stick with pharmacology because you're gonna know the mechanism of action of the drug, the side effects, the active metabolites, what receptors it acts on, and then even deeper than that, you're gonna learn about the physiology of those receptors. So when you think about an alpha and a beta receptor, you think about what actually makes up an alpha and a beta receptor. When that molecule binds to the alpha or beta receptor, what happens next? Intracellularly, 
what are the next steps that happen to make the physiologic response that we get when we give a drug like, say, epi or norepi. And you're going to know all of that as a CRNA student. And the knowledge that you get from that is just unmatched really anywhere else because I didn't learn any of that in nurse practitioner school. You will learn it in CRNA school. And uh, the next reason, again, that kind of leads me down this next path. The next reason is you're really experts in critical care as a CRNA because you have a background in critical care. Most people in nursing, me for emergency medicine, I was a little kind of the odd duck out, never worked in the ICU, um, am thriving currently in CRNA school, didn't work in the ICU, but did have critical care experience. So I've seen several people comment on my video about how'd you get in without critical care experience? Well, I have seven years of critical care experience as a nurse practitioner, that's what got me in. So again, not the video for this, but as a CRNA, you're gonna be an expert in critical care. You're gonna be taking care of patients really at their most vulnerable time. And this is one of the things that I kind of overlooked initially when thinking about CRNA school was the fact that you're an expert in critical care. You are the one who is inducing the patient, managing the airway, intubating the patient, maintaining the patient through their anesthetic, emerging the patient, and extubating the patient. And that is really critical care in the essence. So as a CRNA, you're gonna be doing that pretty much day in and day out with every patient you take care of. Now, obviously there are some exceptions. You're not gonna be intubating every patient. For instance, regional anesthesia, doing peripheral nerve blocks or doing neuraxial anesthesia. The patient may not need their airway managed, but you will be managing hemodynamic status. And so as a CRNA, you're, you're the expert in that critical care area because you have advanced knowledge in physiology, in pathophysiology, in pharmacology, even more so than you would if you were a nurse practitioner in a critical care setting. It's just so in depth that uh, this video is not the video to get into about how in depth anesthesia school is, but just trust and believe you will be the expert in critical care when you get finished. And that's one reason that I chose a career in anesthesia. So the uh, next point that I wanna make kind of goes along that same area uh, as critical care, and that is you're gonna be an expert in procedures. And so if you really like procedures, anesthesia is gonna be the career for you. So I will say as a nurse practitioner, you do get, this, you get, you do get to do some procedures, excuse my word salad, you do get to do some procedures, but it's not like an everyday thing that you're gonna be doing. Uh, sure, in emergency medicine, you might do procedures every day, you might suture some, you might drain some INDs, you might occasionally put in a central line, might occasionally intubate, et cetera. But as a CRNA, you're gonna be doing that literally day in and day out. <clears throat> you're gonna be managing airways on every patient you come across, whether it be invasive or non-invasive, if it's invasive, then uh, you know, you'll be intubating the patient, you'll be putting in an LMA. If it's non-invasive, you may be just doing some jaw thrust, putting in title on, putting a mask on, bagging the patient, whatever it is. But you're gonna be managing the patient and doing procedures day in and day out, putting in central lines, putting in art lines. You're gonna be doing those procedures, doing nerve blocks, doing ultrasound, doing neuraxial anesthetics, epidurals, spinals. And I really kind of underestimated that whenever I first thought about anesthesia. I didn't think about the procedural side, but the procedural side is definitely there. And if you like procedures, you're gonna love anesthesia because you're doing procedures literally every single day. Okay, final point that I wanna make uh, for the anesthesia pathway, that is the salary. And again, same spiel I gave you with the nurse practitioner career, salary, is, money is not gonna make you happy, but, it's okay if salary is one of the reasons you wanna be a CRNA, that's fine. CRNA average salary is $200,000 to $250,000. And again, it's gonna depend on your location. So if you're working in like a major metropolitan area, level one trauma center, you're probably gonna make a little bit less, more like 150 to 180,000. If you're working rural area where it's independent practice, Arizona, New Mexico, North Dakota, Montana, some of the rural areas in California, things like that, you're gonna be making $200, $250 an hour, anywhere from $200,000 to upwards of near $400,000 a year. And so salary can be a huge factor in that. And again, like I said, that's all gonna depend on your location and your practice arena. So if you're in a major metropolitan area, you're probably gonna make less. If you're in like an independent practice area, 
in like small town America, you're probably gonna be making more. And that goes along with kind of what I talked about earlier as a nurse practitioner. As a travel nurse practitioner, working in remote Alaska, sure, I made $30,000 a month, but that's not like downtown Dallas, Texas, where I was from. It's a much different area, much smaller area, not somewhere I would ever want to live remote Alaska, but a good place to travel and make really good money. And some of those same opportunities are there for anesthesia if that's what you want to do. If your goal is to make money, then anesthesia is probably a career for you. Now for the most interesting part, and that is why did I choose both? What made me want to do both of those careers at the same time? And I would say the first reason is there are combined careers for NPs and CRNAs. This is kind of a side note. There's a program in New York that combines a CRNA and an acute care nurse practitioner certification into one program. And the interesting thing about that is if you think on the physician side, a physician anesthesiologist, they will, they're often uh, ICU attendings and they work in the OR. And so they kind of have that dual role of managing the patients in the critical care unit and then also managing the anesthesia in the OR. And as an acute care nurse practitioner, which I hold that certification, and as a CRNA one day, um, you can hold both of those as well. You can work in the ICU as an intensivist, and you can work in the OR as a uh, CRNA in managing the anesthetic. And what does that look like? Practically, you could work with a cardiothoracic surgery group. You could do the cardiothoracic anesthesia in the OR and you could help round on the patients in the ICU. There are ways that you can utilize both degrees. And sure, you're not gonna see these jobs posted everywhere because it's so rare. It's very rare to have somebody who is a CRNA and a nurse practitioner. They're out there. A few of them are some in my uh, part of my faculty for my program, but it's more often than not, you're gonna see just CRNA or just nurse practitioner not combined. But there are ways that you can utilize both certifications. And the example I gave was just one of those ways. And the other thing I wanna mention is the second point is the, the careers really complement each other. They really do, they really complement each other. And I can see that in my anesthesia training now. So currently in my fourth quarter of anesthesia school, we're taking a physical assessment class. And the physical assessment class is really geared, to, geared towards preoperative assessment and clearance. So determining, is this patient safe for surgery? And so in that assessment class, we're learning to take a history, do a physical exam, et cetera, et cetera. And taking a history and doing a physical is much different as a provider than it is as a nurse. And so already having that background, already having that knowledge of how to take a history, how to order diagnostics, what does the patient need, knowing that, that really is complementing what I'm learning in my CRNA program right now. And I know that that will just continue to be the case when I get into the clinical setting. All that I know as a nurse practitioner, all that I've learned, all that I've practiced, all of that will complement my career as a CRNA provider one day. And the last point I wanna to make to you is there are really more job opportunities for CRNAs and nurse practitioners combined. And it's really interesting because the prescriptive authority for CRNAs is really dependent upon your state. So there are some states where CRNAs can't prescribe medications, like you can't send a patient home with a script to go get some Zofran or whatever, whatever you're writing them a script for. But in some states you can. And so combine, combining a nurse practitioner and a CRNA, having both certifications, you don't have to worry about that. Whatever state you go to, you're gonna have prescriptive authority because you're a nurse practitioner. You can see the patient. And it opens up more job opportunities because when employers see that you are a nurse practitioner and a CRNA, they know that you have that medical management background outside of anesthesia. For instance, you can work in a preoperative clinic. And so if you work in a preoperative clinic, you can clear patients for surgery and then you can go do their anesthetic in a few days after you clear them. And as a nurse practitioner, you can manage their chronic illnesses. You can start them on blood pressure medicine, start them on cholesterol medicine, whatever you need to do. You have that added knowledge of outpatient management, whatever your certification is. I'm more kind of more speaking towards a family nurse practitioner, but you have that added advantage of having an additional certification in another area outside of anesthesia that's still advanced practice. And that really plays a huge role, especially in small town areas where maybe they're 
aren't enough primary care providers or there are not enough providers to help in, around in the hospital and you can utilize your skills to do that. There are jobs for both, for you to utilize both degrees and I am 1000% going to find a job where I can utilize both skill sets, whether it be rounding the ICU and working in the OR or working outpatient and doing anesthesia as well. And that leads me to my last point is you can really focus on pain management with a nurse practitioner and a CRNA degree, or not a nurse practitioner and a degree, but a nurse practitioner and CRNA dual certification. Having both certifications, you can work in an outpatient pain setting. You can be doing chronic pain management. You can be doing addiction medicine. You have the certifications to manage the addiction medicine and then you also have the credentials to manage the chronic pain through your CRNA program. You'll learn how to manage chronic pain. You can go get additional certifications and additional education on how to do interventional pain, if that's something you're interested in. You can go do interventional pain management, learn how to do spine injections, neck injections, joint injections, and you can also manage the patient from a medical standpoint outside of anesthesia through your nurse practitioner certification. So. All of that to say, there are jobs out there if you want to choose both, and it is perfectly acceptable to choose both certifications and to go get both certifications. So with that being said, comment below, let me know why you would choose CRNA or why you would choose nurse practitioner, or if you're even interested in you're crazy like me, why you would choose both. I would love to hear your responses. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.